Hi there, it's me, it's Mike. I've got another video for you. I'm getting more into these and I wanted to take a break from doing a Black Series video. I just did bots and shots. So for the people that like bots and shots, there's a there's a bots and shots to watch. But I also wanted to do a G.I. Joe video because while I still love the Black Series, I still love Star Wars, I'm enjoying the line. I still have my podcast, Black Series Cantina, if you want to go listen to that, and um, I, I produce a lot of regular content with Zach, my my friend Zach, not tall blonde Zach. He's a, he's a different, he's a different Zach. I wanted to talk about GI Joe, give my thoughts on the line. I'm not gonna do these as often, but I just they're just really knocking out of the park with two successful Has Labs and a bunch of just incredible, incredible releases. So I wanted to spend the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, and I know that because I've already recorded that part of the video. So, you know, if you wanted to see the, what my, my thoughts on the latest releases, if you were thinking about getting the line or you're in the line and you just want to know my thoughts, I don't know. I don't know. I'm making a video. You can watch it for any reason you want. But let's take a look at like, oh, let's say six G.I. Joe figures. Get my thoughts on those. Okay, so let's just get started because this is going to take, I've got so many figures to go over. I don't even know. Uh, where to start first. I don't want this to take forever. So we're just going to get started with um, this. This is Bazooka. I love Bazooka. I always have as a kid. I, he He's literally just a guy in a football jersey. I guess it's a New England Patriots thing. I looked it up online. I honestly have no idea. He doesn't really have anything on the back. I think he used to. I feel like he used to say something, but I don't remember. It's so long ago and I'm not getting that detailed into it. I like this. They did a good job. I will say the the legs are, are reused. Not that it's a big deal. These are roadblocks legs. Oh, I don't know if they were used before that, but I looked at the roadblock I have, and these are definitely his legs. And you can tell they're old because they have pins in them, whereas his arms, like his whole upper body, is brand new. Arms, chest. Um, but there's no pins here, and you can kind of tell... You know, pinless is up here, pinned is down here, old, new. But, uh, you know, th there's just a lot to go on here. They all have kind of the same thing. They've got um, butterfly joints. They've got upper bicep swivel. They've got double jointed arms. They've got swivels at the wrist. You know, their necks are super good. Their torsos are good. They usually have these little extra bits that I'll talk about more that kind of get in the way. I don't like it. I don't love his belt being a loose piece, but I kind of get it because it's easier to just have a generic, you know, pants and then just put a belt on that kind of matches him. Okay, so his name's Bazooka. Can, can you guess what he does? Because he has a bazooka? That's right. He bazookas. So this is basically all he comes with, uh, with this little uh, helmet. So we're going to put that on because for me, bazooka has got to have a helmet. That's like number one uh, on the bazooka list of bazooka things to do. No comics, no gum, but uh, definitely a helmet. Now, these are the other things he comes with. And I love that basically, like you can just slap this on his back. And, and like, that's it. That's, that's all of his accessories. That's all of his weapons. Everything is right there. I actually love that about the GI Joe, uh, line. Um, but you know, obviously the, the bazooka itself comes right off There's a little rack down here that holds it on the top right there. It's also got some handles. Let's talk about the bazooka real quick. There's a lot of great molding and detailing in here. Like, uh, this is painted. Uh, there's there's a moving piece back here that's supposed to be like for loading. I don't think you actually want to put anything in there. Uh, it does come off. It does feel a little flimsy, but uh, it's I don't know, it's fine. It does just kind of go back on like that. I always just kind of front load. And and what are you front loading? You're front loading missiles. So there's four missiles. There's four spots on the bag. All of them look like this except for one. Don't ask me. <laughs> what this one's different for. I don't know. I don't know why that one's different than all the others. I don't know why they're not all painted. I don't know if this is like a like a like a stun grenade or or the extra like nuclear option or something. I have no idea. But uh, it can just go, you know, in the front right there. 
to kind of load. There is a little hole back here, or I think if you have some kind of effect, it can go in there. Um, obviously, it's got a strap, so you can strap the uh, the bazooka on the arm if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. No, we're we're going to we're going to to bazooka bazooka up because uh, he's bazooka, you know. So you can have a hand on top here. You can have a hand on the little handle down here if you want. You can. Oops, there we go. So you can kind of get the arm up like that, and that will allow you to kind of have a better grip on this. So, you know, you can put them in here. I usually take the backpack off. I just find it to be unwieldy and I like the look of it without the backpack. So we're gonna relieve, you know, relieve him of his backpack right now. Um, you know, so so since he's bazooka-ing, you can just get him going on his knees like he's gonna, like he's got a, you know, fire or something there. So. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on. And that's the other thing, you know, the belt wants to ride up. Um, so he's kind of got to get it down. He, he, he has a decent range of movement in his legs to kind of keep that up. So it looks good. This is Bazooka. He's very Bazooka-y. Um, and that's everything to talk about with Bazooka for now. So what, next we're going to move on to the next Joe. Uh, and you know what? Let's move on to, to Torpedo here. Now, I might for some reason say Wetsuit because... As a kid, I never had torpedo. I had wetsuit. <laughs> you know, whenever I get a GI Joe and it's a it's a swimmy guy, it's wetsuit. Uh, I definitely like this. This, uh, unlike bazooka, torpedo is all brand new. There's there's nothing reused on this, but they are reusing most of or some of this body, not all of it, but some of this body for the upcoming Cobra Eel, and I'm okay with that. He does have these little kind of side things on here, which again, I don't love. This one's fine, but this one likes to ride up and down. And I just, I don't like that. He also has this dive watch, which actually is pretty cool. There's a little dive watch right here. I like that. It just kind of gives him some extra little flair. You can take it off, like, you know, the hands pop right out. So you can take this off if you want to, but I like it. He also has this little webbing. This is not removable unless you want to pop like the arms and stuff out, but uh, there's some detail on here, but mostly he's pretty boring. Like he's just wearing, he's literally wearing a wetsuit, even though he's torpedo. So it, it, there's not a lot of left to the imagination here, torpedo. You got, you know, it's pretty skin tight. You're a, your torpedo show in there, torpedo. <laughs> <sighs> So let's talk about what he comes with, because unlike Bazooka, who just comes with like a helmet and like a bazooka and, you know, backpack and some ammo, but like there wasn't a lot there. Torpedo here comes with a lot. Being a, you know, diver, uh, he's a Navy SEAL guy. He comes, of course, with his air tank, his scuba suit, uh, the scuba gear. Now, this is not what the original torpedoes scuba tank look like he had a pretty unique looking scuba tank that i might show up on screen right here yeah i'm not gonna do that uh the other thing is this is a separate piece this little uh head piece right here is can come off <sighs> they're goggles so you don't have to have it on uh it looks a little weird when it's not on his head like because you want to maybe you want it up like he's just kind of hanging out and land he doesn't want to put it on but you can push it down over his head obviously and that looks a lot more natural the problem is whenever you now turn his head the the hoses get weird especially one of these likes to pop off it doesn't want to sit flush on his face a lot uh whenever you want to change his head so it's it's not great also i don't love that the eyes aren't see-through the cobra eels that i mentioned earlier they're going to have see-through goggles so it kind of sucks that he doesn't but it looks pretty good for the most part. Now, being a scuba diver, he also does have fins. Because, you know, if you're going to scuba dive, you got to have fins. There is a little L and R inside. It's hard to show up on camera because they're black. So I'll put this on the left foot here. Like that. Left, left fin 
goes on the left foot and it just kind of slips right over. Very easy. I like the fins have this nice red color on them. They're made of a very soft plastic, which is great for this, bad for other things that I'll get into. So now, you know, he's wearing his big, big old fins, which look ridiculous when he's standing up. But if you get him into like a, like a swimming pose, like, you know, like this, like it, it looks pretty good. Like that looks rad. That, that just looks natural. I like that. But when he's just standing there, um, you, you don't get, you don't get good poses <laughs> of a guy standing <laughs> in, in flipper. He's not scuba Steve here. Uh, now let's talk about some weaponry because he does have some. First, he does come with this little knife. It's a nice knife. It's pretty basic. Uh, I think the handle's red. The, the blade is black, which is, I don't know, that's a thing. Um, but it does have this loose sheath and the, it fits right on just fine. Slides right in, you know, because, you know, if you're underwater, you got to have a knife. There's a lot of reasons why you'd want a knife. A knife is a, a very important thing to have when you scuba dive. That's like a normal thing. Um, then he comes with two weapons. The first one is his harpoon, which is neat. But the problem is, like his fins, it's made out of a very soft rubber, which I don't love because it just kind of looks warped for the most part. Uh, I had to straighten mine out because it kind of kind of came a little bent, especially the end right here. This is painted, which is nice, but um, it doesn't look great. So obviously you can hold it, but he can also put it right here so he can store it, which is neat. I like I like it when there's storage. The thing I don't love is this little uh, anchor right here, a little wrist strap. Uh, if I mean it fits over his wrist because that's what you're supposed to do when you have. Uh, a harpoon. I used to go um, hand, like sling fishing, and you gotta have a little, a little strap on there so you don't lose it underwater. Um, but the problem is, this is sculpted like this. It just kind of sits like that, so it looks kind of weird, like that. I don't love that. Uh, and then the last thing he comes with, obviously, is he comes with an actual weapon. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not a gun guy. Don't at me. I don't know what kind of gun this is, but it's a, it's a gun. Uh, obviously, he can't use it underwater, but he's not going to be solely in underwater missions. Uh, it looks cool. The magazine does come out, which is cool. Uh, and, of course, you can just kind of put it in his hands. Uh, of course, the harpoon wants to, to pop off here. Um, so, like, we can kind of, kind of do something like this. I mean, what, what, can I, what else can I say about Torpedo? He's good. I, I don't love some things about him. I know he's a lot of people's favorite and I don't want to take that away from them. I think he looks nice, but I think he looks better when he's posed to swim, which means you got to put him on a flight stand to make him look cool <laughs> wearing this. Uh, I am looking forward to getting a couple of eels for him to fight, uh, but let's move on to the next G.I. Joe, shall we? Next, we're moving on to rock and roll, rock and roll. I never had rock and roll as a kid. He was one of the first Joes that came out in the first wave. Those came out in 82. I was born in 82. He's cool though. I mean, I, he, I definitely remember him from the cartoon. So it's not like, I don't know who he is. Of all of them, he comes with just so much. First, his head looks incredible. Look at that beard sculpt. Look at that hair, the wash on it. Everything looks nice. On his arms, like he's got these tampoed, uh, tattoos all over, which is rad. Um, you can pop off his hand here and take the little bullet <laughs> bracelet that he has off, you know, and just have the tattoo running all up and down his hand. So that, I mean, that's cool. He's got the same articulation as everyone else. He actually does have new knees. Uh, at least, uh, I don't know if they're new for him, but they're newer knees because they are uh, they're 100% pinless. Same with his arms. He has this little bullet bandolier thing there. You know, it's a soft molded rubber. It looks good. It's got a little paint on it. Um, he's got some more tattoos on this side. And, and again, you can also take this little bracelet watch thing off right here. He has a nice belt that's a separate piece. Uh, that's got a lot of molding on it as well. A lot of pieces, some holes that we'll get into uh, for use of things. He has a little holster on his leg. And then a little pouch on here. And I know I get this, but I also don't love this. Like I could do without this. Maybe the original figure had this and that's fine. But like, I don't know. I, I, I just, I feel like it's just too much. I feel like, you know, it's an extra piece that kind of slides around. And I would rather not have that. Uh, I will say some of these figures, I think 
bazooka does too and i didn't go over it but they also have an extra little hinge right here at the boot uh just to give them a little extra movement but also to make it a separate piece so they can mold a separate piece instead of making it all you know kind of one piece from here to here now it's just a piece from here to here which makes them in, in the future more uh changeable because gi joe is the poster child for reused parts uh if people complain about that now um gi joe is kind of what started it even more so than transformers like gi joe is really what started it so that's the figure let's talk about what he comes with because he comes with quite possibly the most out of any of these regular joe figures first he does come with a helmet now look at this helmet there's a lot of stuff going on on this helmet it's got a little hang tank because he's kind of a surfer dude um that's kind of his bio it's got a lot of like a pouch back here painted a lot of details everything looks fantastic uh, and then that just just kind of slides right on his head. So we have two figures here with helmets. His looks great. So he is, I don't know if you can tell this, he's the machine gunner. So he does come with that, but we're not going to get into that just yet. We're going to look at that last. I don't know why I said that. Uh, first, he comes with a little sidearm pistol. Now, it does have a little extra little thing here. I think that's for putting uh, blast effects on. And I know there's a silencer that some characters come with that you can put on there if you want to uh that goes into his little holster stop it stop right now before you make that comment that i know you're gonna make i already figured it out just keep watching the video fits right in you can have him obviously hold it but he's the machine gunner not the sidearm holster pistol gunner uh he also comes with for some reason <laughs> This little walkie-talkie. This is like an old 80s walkie-talkie. I don't know what's up with this. Uh, but you can you can put it on the back right here. I think that's where it shows on the box. Um, the top is kind of rubbery, and he, obviously his big muscles get in the way, kind of bend it. Um, I haven't had a problem with it falling off, but it is, it's just kind of like a piece that you can lose. He, unlike the other figures, comes with alternate fists. So he's got his two hands that he comes with in there. He also comes with a fisty fist, like an actual fist if you want him to have a fist. And then he comes with these uh, kind of punk rock, you know, like I guess it's like metal devil horn hands. Um, and I, you know, most people that I've seen, let's put his little bracelet back on. Uh, most people I've seen usually rock these because it's a very unique piece. And you know, since he is kind of the heavy metal machine gunner guy, uh, this is kind of, it's fun to have. And they, they have the little, tampo tattoo right here it looks good it does look good uh so he comes with two pairs of fists which more figures need to come with alternate hands for funsies but let's talk about his machine gun so he comes with this big ass machine gun now i have some extra pieces that he comes with already on here um he comes with this little ammo box and a very small little set of bullets uh, now you can, if you want to, put the ammo box on the side right here using this one. Like this. So if, if you want it on the side like that, you can. That's what that hole's for. Uh, I typically just like putting it on the side of the of the gun. Like it's obviously holding more more rounds, so it's not all ridiculous but you can have to make sure these go the right way you can just feed these through because that's kind of what this is for is just to feed the the, the bullets through when you're firing them because it is again it's a machine gun so it comes with that which is just kind of neat um, but what we're going to do here is just put the big old machine gun in his hand he does come with these little kickstand things, so if you want to position him on the ground, you can. I don't love it. I'm probably not going to do it, but it's there if you want to. And it's all about having choice. Like, that's that's what it's all about, is having choice. Uh, one thing I do wish he came with, maybe. I would have liked this. Oh, let's, let's put these back on. Don't want to don't lose that. There we go. Um, I, I do wish he came with some blast effects. I would... I would have liked the blast effect instead of like this, this little fist. I would have liked that, I think. Um, maybe instead of this piece, I would have liked the blast effect. 
But again, maybe he, the original had that and that's what they want to do. So they don't have to sculpt it onto the leg so they can reuse it in the future. I get it. I'm, I, I get that. But that's kind of what we're looking at here. So that's rock and roll. He's fine. He's not my favorite, but he's not my least favorite. Uh, the next one we're going to look at, and this is the final Joe of the team. And he is my favorite Joe. <laughs> um, this is Shipwreck. Now, Shipwreck here... I looked him up and I found out some things I didn't know about. So firstly, he is a San Diego native, just like me. He was born in Chula Vista. That's not like me. I was not born in San Diego, but I live in San Diego. So that's just kind of cool. And it makes sense because there's a lot of Navy stuff going on here. This, this looks like he he just stepped out of the cartoon. He's got the he's got his hat. He's got his shirt. Um, he's got this cool belt and he's got a belt underneath. So it's like a belt belt. Um, there's a little painted sculpt on there. Um, he's got some holsters. He's got a little holster for a sidearm down here and also one here. He's got some cool tattoos. Uh, he looks really cool. Now, they did give us a little option here for some extra display pieces. First, um, and, and this, I'm just showing this off because I'm never going to use this again. Once I do this, I'm never going to do this again. He has an alternate. He has a wig. <laughs> so, there are some G.I. Joes that come with alternate hair pieces. He's one. So if you want him looking, you know, n not wearing a hat, you can do that. The downside of having it as an extra hair piece is you can't have him just hold the hat because it's, it's also got hair attached to it. So that's weird. Uh, and I'm never going to use this again once I do this, uh, once I stop this video. So that's going back on because to me, he's always going to have that. Growing up, I had the Revenge of Cobra on VHS, that five episode set. I watched that ad nauseum as a child. And that's where Shipwreck here got introduced in like a random Cobra bar. I never really understood why Shipwreck was in a Cobra bar. He just joined the Joes by just hanging out. Like he didn't like en enlist. I don't know what's going on. It was like a secret Joe or just like, yeah, I guess you're a Joe now. Anyways. It was some weird stuff. So let's talk about the other things that he comes with. First, uh, he also comes with a sidearm. Now, I actually don't know. Did I get this one mixed up with rock and rolls? I might have actually gotten this one mixed up with rock and rolls. It doesn't really matter. A gun is a gun. But no, I did. I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure. Whoops. I'm pretty sure that this is rock and rolls. Yep. I did, and then for the comments, the people commenting, if you commented as soon as I did that, uh, you're gonna look foolish now because I figured it out. And this one goes in here because that one has a little hole for the end right there. Anyways, so he has a little holster for a sidearm there. Now he also comes with a holster for this sidearm. There's a little bit more, it's more of like a, a blunderbuss, like a pirate gun. Um, and I like this except for just like, Torpedoes, I don't like this uh, because no matter how you hold it, like if it's when it's sitting in the holster, it's just kind of hanging out like this. And I don't like that. Uh, in fact, I would probably cut this off because I just, I don't like how this looks. You can't even like hook it around anything. It's just kind of weird. It's just there. Uh, and it only looks good when he's holding the gun you know, like straight out, uh, which I'll do in a bit because I'm not quite done yet. Um, the next accessory he comes with is this rope, which is neat. Uh, and the reason he comes with it will be apparent if you don't already know. Um, so it just kind of goes around there. I do think it makes him look cooler. He's, you know, he's a sailor. Of course, he's going to be wearing some rope. And what that will do is that goes with this accessory, which is just an anchor. <laughs> he just, for some reason, I guess he's gonna, he wants to climb something or if he's in a ship and needs to stop it for a second from floating around. Uh, he comes with an anchor. Now you can put the anchor here uh, on this little hook on his belt, or you can put the anchor here on the little hook on the back. I usually like it on this back one just because it's not in the way. Um, but again, it's cool. It's one of the things I like about GI Joe's is they make it so you can kind of store all of these things. The only thing you can't store uh, is his extra hair. So that's just going to hang out. Uh, but he has one last accessory, and that is Polly here. So Polly is his parrot. He's very apparent in the cartoon, probably in the comic. I don't really read the comics, but Polly here is a little different from what you might remember because he has a little peg leg now. And they did that because it was easier to get him 
uh, to peg onto here. So on the top of the rope is this little spot. So if you want him hanging out on his shoulder, you can have Polly there on the shoulder. There is also a spot for Polly on his wrist. There's a nice little hole on the wrist. So Polly can kind of hang out there if you want to. Very similar to Freedom and Spirit if you have those, but I do, oops, you know, don't normally like to throw Polly around, uh, but I do like to put Polly on the rope there. I think that looks good. And, and I'm pretty sure this is the whole reason why they have the rope is to give him a way to sit on his shoulder, which is more ship <laughs> shipwreck-ish. That's what Shipwreck and Polly did. Um, then, you know, having to figure out a way to do it. So uh, he does stay on there pretty nice. He doesn't fall off, so that's good. Uh, but let's talk about the stupid gun here, uh, just to kind of show you what I was talking about. Uh, and again, I didn't say this, but Shipwreck is all new. There's not a pin anywhere on him, so that's nice. But if we get if we get this blender bus here, um, like this looks fine because that's how gravity works where this is hanging down. But like as soon as you do like this, like that's not how gravity works. This should be hanging down here. And I don't like that. It just never, it only looks good when it's doing this. And I don't, I just don't like that. So that's Shipwreck. I love him. He's my favorite of the new Joes that I just got of the GI Joes. He might be my favorite of all of them, but we have to move on now to the Cobras. So Joes are done. Let's talk Cobras. And we're going to start off with Copperhead. Now Copperhead, um, he's, he's pretty unique. First of all, he has a very distinguished look. I loved Copperhead as a kid. I had Copperhead as a kid. The weird thing though, is I didn't have the water moccasin, which was the vehicle that he was packaged in. I remember owning him. I don't know how I got him. I might've picked him up at a garage sale, or maybe he was like a friend and I left it over or I traded it, I honestly don't remember. I just remember I definitely had Copperhead and I didn't have a water moccasin. Um, so let's talk about Copperhead real quick. First of all, he has hands down the coolest helmet in all of G.I. Joe. I just, I love this helmet. It looks like a weird race car space. I don't even know, man. It's, it, I just love it. I love these little fins coming out. I love the colors. I love everything about it. He's got a little breathing mask thing going over here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, he has these cool little bandolier thing that kind of goes over his chest. I feel like there should be a, a movable gun here, but it's not. And this is so small. Like what gun can go in here? It's a little, like a little tiny little Derringer kind of thing. I don't know. But I don't love that this gets in the way of his really cool silver Cobra emblem on the chest. Copperhead is all new. Um, there's no, there's not a hinge uh, peg in sight. It's all pinless, which is nice. Uh, he does have a nice belt and then an, another belt on top of that belt. He has this little holster on the side, and then he's got these rad little kind of ridged for my pleasure ribs that kind of go down his thighs and whatnot. And I love that. I love this figure. So apparently, according to my friend High, he was a de facto dreadnought without being an actual dreadnought. Uh, he's also, when the Python Patrol comes out, he is... The leader of the Python Patrol, which, you know, being Copperhead, which is an actual snake, I mean, that kind of makes sense. So what does he come with? He comes with not a lot, surprisingly, but not nothing. So first, let's talk about his little gun. He does come with a pistol. Um, it's like a little Luger, like that. And, and this one sits right in his sidearm like this little holster sidearm thing. I don't, I don't know gun lingo guys. I'm sorry. I'm not gun guy. I can shoot guns. I grew up shooting guns. It's just, um, something I never really got super into though. I will say, you know, I, I talked about his looks and I didn't talk about the thing that kind of bugs me the most. I don't love these boots. They're just thick, like they're almost like Crocs a little bit or like, Frankenstein boots? I don't know. I don't love these, but um, everything else is fine, I guess. So that's his sidearm. Uh, the next thing he comes with is this big old machete. Uh, and that does just kind of sit right here on the side. I'm not entirely sure which way it goes in because it's a weird shape. So 
I put it in like this, but I think it can go in both ways just because of the, the shape. Maybe not. Nope. Just kidding. It goes in that way because that's how it slides in easily. Uh, anyways, uh, then the next thing he comes with is this little uh, holster. Now, this holster kind of is in lieu of a backpack. So there's a little hole in the back. And what's cool about this is that uh, when you have it in, it doesn't really look like a backpack to me. Like, it's not just a holster pegged into his back like it is on, I believe, the Cobra Officer. I do think this is the same holster. Uh, but because of the webbing, it looks to me like it's kind of attached to the webbing instead of just hanging on his back. And I, I like that. I like the little molding. I like the little bullets on there. Uh, and what goes in there uh, is his like big old six shooter gun with a scope on it. Um, it kind of looks a little, oops, it kind of looks a little Megatron-y a little bit. Uh, and that can just kind of go right in here. Or of course you can have him holding it if you want to as well. But again, what I love about these uh, figures is Hasbro does a great job of just giving you storage for pretty much everything. And I don't know why that's not going in. There we go. And so that's in. Uh, so that's Copperhead and Copperhead looks fantastic. The only thing I don't love, just like before these stupid armbands. Now the, the original figure had armbands and I get that, but these things suck. They don't want to stay up. In fact, I absolutely hate them. They almost they almost ruined the figure for me with these stupid armbands that just do not want to stay where they are because they rely on friction and they always want to slide down. And you can, you can remove his hands, you can slide them off if, you, if it really bugs you. But again, that's kind of part of the original toy look. So that makes sense that he has it, but it's just something to think about. Now, that brings us to the final figure and this one is a doozy this is one i've been waiting for for a long time this is scrap iron uh, i was asked a while ago by my buddy hi you know what what cobra officer or what cobra troops i wanted to see in the line and my number one was scrap iron again because i watched that revenge of cobra miniseries so often he was definitely featured in those a lot, especially at the beginning. He does not come with a lot for the figure itself. And, and uh, uh, I'll tell you what I mean in a sec. First of all, first of all, let's talk about what he looks like. The figure usually has this helmet on. Um, that's, that's how you see him all the time in the show. But Hasbro's made it so he has a removable helmet. And this head is... Phenomenal. The scarring, uh, the burnt, I don't, it just looks so good. This is a fantastic head and it, it's honestly a shame to cover it up with his helmet. Now, that, I mean, but that gives him, you know, the look that he's going for. The downside to this helmet is that it is a little big. Um, if you push it all the way down, it kind of goes over his nose and I feel like it kind of, it kind of overlaps too much. Um, you can, I, I think I put a little, I'm, I'm going to put a little blue tack inside there to keep it from squishing all the way down, just to kind of keep it up a little bit. So it doesn't look too weird, but it looks good. It's a good looking helmet. It's got the nice little Cobra on the top here. Um, I definitely like that kind of running down. He's got a Cobra emblem on his sleeve. He has this little flak jacket. You know, this is what the original figure looked like. They did a good job of updating the toy and this is what he looked like. They have, he has a little, you know, the grenades here. He's got this uh, kind of just like a like a nice sweater, like a sensible sweater underneath <laughs> of polo. You know, it's kind of weird. But uh, the only other thing he really comes with for him uh, is that he comes with this little sidearm and that goes right into the holster here. Uh, the original figure also came with a sidearm uh, and that is scrap iron, but that's not the only thing that the figure as a whole came with because he came with also this tiny little mini baby his tank. Now it's not really a baby his tank. It's just a little kind of drone rocket launcher. Now the original toy also came with a rocket launcher like this, but it was a stationary one. And another accessory for him is a little control pad for the drone. So that's his gun basically. 
uh, as he comes with this little remote control for this, which is cool. Uh, so some things about this, there's a little ball joint at the top. There's a little bit of articulation here and there, but it's, it's kind of just ball joints and, and whatnot to make it move around. The treads are not movable. They are rubber. Like you can touch them and feel them and they feel like they're rubber, but they're not movable, which is a little disappointing to me, but it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, it of course comes with two missiles. Like so. So we have a nice little, you know, rocket display pod, but that's not all he comes with. Now this was, this isn't even a deluxe figure. This is a step above deluxe figure. Deluxe figures are like 35 bucks. That's gonna be like snow job coming up and like the, I think the snow serpent coming up and uh, tripwire, because it comes with a lot of stuff, but, but this is a step above that. Uh, this is like a straight up two pack. And I don't actually hate that because you get a lot of stuff. Even if this is all it came with, I feel like oh, that's pretty good, but that's not all it came with. It also came with a bunch of effects. Now, uh, there's two of these. This one came out a little bent. This one did not, but um, it is pliable. I could probably heat it up and kind of straighten it back out. But what you can do here is plug these onto the end, plug this into here, and make it look like it's firing the missile. But I am retired. So there's one for each right here, and that is rad. But, but it goes one better than that because, I don't know if you've noticed this or seen it, but they have released for pre-order a little his tank team and one of the figures <laughs> comes with a rocket launcher that is just bazooka's rocket launcher and it comes with these same blast effects so you can if you want to use these for those bazookas it works for bazooka's bazooka here it works for the cobra bazookas coming out so this is a very versatile blast effect, which I absolutely love. This is the kind of thing that I think is amazing. And that's not all. He also comes with just straight up black, like ground effects, like ground blast effects. Now I don't know why you need all of these. Some of them are weird. Like these two are cool. They just kind of look like explosions going around. But some of these, like what's this for? What's that, what's that for? I don't know. This one's also a little weird, but you know, it's, it's neat that they come with it. This is a cool ass set for, I think it was like $45. You get all of this stuff. And at no point, like in Star Wars, have I ever felt like you got <laughs> this much stuff for that much money. Uh, and I know a lot of it comes down to Hasbro owns GI Joe. Their budgets don't have to factor in those licensing deals and all of that stuff. So, you know, I'm not gonna get into that. I get it, I get why it's different. I get that it's different, but it's hard to ignore the fact that you definitely get more stuff for your money with this line and that kind of makes it more fun. So that's my thoughts on the current kind of releases of G.I. Joe. They're not all of them, but they're the most recent ones that I have. And like I say in the video, you know, it's, it's hard to compare this to a line like the Black Series because Hasbro owns G.I. Joe. It's their property. Whereas Star Wars, Hasbro has to work with Lucasfilm and pay, you know, the the licensing fee eats up into their budget. So it's not a one for one comparison at all. As much as you want to make it one, as much as your brain won't allow you to separate the fact that the same company makes both, they're two completely different entities as far as Hasbro is concerned. Um, so I get that, but also, it's really hard to look at both on your shelf and it's and, and ignore the fact that G.I. Joe 
is just so good. Like, I don't know if I would be into it had I not had that nostalgia from my childhood. I remember back in like 2017, 2018, thinking, man, it would be cool if we had G.I. Joe's at a six inch scale like we have Black Series. I'm so smart for thinking that as if I were the only person who had ever had that thought. And the answer is I'm not. I'm it was an obvious thing. Everyone can do it or wanted it. So we got it and I'm loving it. And I've got a bunch. I'm not a completionist by any means far from it, but I'm collecting the ones that I had as a kid. The ones just kind of stand out to me. And these six, I just feel like every, every year that goes by, they just get better and better. And these six are no exception. I love all of them. Can't wait to get more. And if you want to see me do more, let me know in the comments. Is this the kind of thing that you like? Is this the kind of style that you like? Let me know. I I genuinely want to know. Uh, and I like to respond. So what what's your favorite? Do you collect these? Do you have them? Let me know. Again, it's just kind of fun. If you could give me a like, share it, subscribe if you haven't. Um, I'm gonna have more content coming out. I got some. I got. I got some more Star Wars stuff to do. Uh, and I'll be doing more Star Wars stuff. And people like bonds and shots still. So that's another one's going to happen. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But uh, with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for getting this far. And I'll see you later. Bye.